Okay, here we go. Okay, everybody. Hey, take your calculator, everyone. In your calculator, please enter these three. So Y1, Y2, Y3. If you have an inspired, be like, you know, F1, F2, F3. So enter those in your calculator. Go. If you have a question, just ask me. I hit Y equal. There we go. Once you have Y equal, uh, you press the... Um, it won't be a T on the calculator because in the calculator, the X variable represents time. So you use X. So you type an X, which is right here, and then just caret, which is here, and then four, and then arrow right. That's usually enough to get you started. If you're still having trouble, wave at me, I'll come look. And Inspire is different. Inspire is like, very powerful, but very painful. Um, so first thing on an Inspire is it works better to make a document. So do you know how to create a document? Let's go menu. I don't know how to do the home. There we go. New document. And we want to add a graph. There we go. So now you type it in. Okay. If you help just stop me as I walk by. Oh, gotcha. So hit um, mode. Change it to, uh, change that to radian. So go down, enter, go down again. Move, hit enter for function. Now it's ready, hit Y equal. There we go. That's funny. I've never heard that before. Rakati. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, next thing. Um, okay, all eyes here. Quick story. 30 second story. Had a student one year. Uh, they went to take the AP test. When they came back, a student came and talked to me. She was very upset. It was, they used to let me see the students during the break. They don't let me do that anymore. So it was during the break. Like they'd done the first half of the test. They have a break. Then they do the second half. She came to me and she was like very upset. She said, Mr. Smith, my friend, I, I can't remember her name, Mary, whatever. She said, we're taking the test. Uh, I'm sitting kind of not right next to Mary, but pretty close. I look, I kind of glance over, she's crying. Okay, here's what had happened. Um, she's on the calculator section of the test. She's working a problem like this. She gets it all ready to go. And she's got it all set up and she hits graph. Hold on. One more time here. And she's getting the message like this. Okay, and she doesn't know what to do. So she honestly worked hard all year. That's why she just was overcome emotionally. It's like she just couldn't help it. Uh, the proctors won't help you. You're on your own. So ever since that happened, I've tried really hard. Uh, the very first day we used the calculators to show everyone uh, this error is very common. And it happens accidentally to many people. Go to y equal. What happens is you don't, you don't try to do this, it just happens. As you're entering the different formulas, you will accidentally highlight this button here called plot one. And once that's turned on, if you try to graph, you will always get this error message. So you fix it by turning that back off. So just go to y equal, highlight, now it's off, now it'll be fine. So, questions? 
Wait. Hold on. Okay, so yours is doing a different error. We'll fix that in a second. So you're okay. Anybody else? Okay, one other thing I want to show you. Look. Okay, if you're ever working a test and your calculator just seems to not be functioning as you expect it to, like you will have practiced a lot with the calculator, you'll know what to expect. Uh, I would not waste time trying to find what's wrong. Just reset the calculator. So everyone's going to do this so you know how, but don't take the last step. Because I don't want you to have to retype everything in. So go second. And then you hit the memory button, which is the plus key. You'll get a menu. Okay, on that menu, you're going to choose item 7, which is reset. That's okay to do. I'll tell you when to stop. You're then going to choose item 1, all RAM. Just don't do the last step. So then you would choose 2 to reset the calculator. Then you start fresh. If never, well, never is a big word. Don't recall hardly ever that not fixing everything. So back to y equal them. Questions? Uh, no. Your error is different, so. Uh, this, for this class, hit the mode button. Uh, the AP test requires that every time you uh, write down a decimal answer, you must have it written rounded to three decimals. So what I prefer for all of you is to simply set your calculator to three decimals like that. So just set the calculator to three decimals. So that's like here. I'll do it for the video people. So you go down to float, then you move over to the third box, press enter, now it's set. Make sure you're also in radian mode. That's that one right there that's flashing. So make sure you're in radian mode. Everything else, I just leave it as the default, other than sometimes people have their answer selection down here set to auto. I think for this class, it's better to have it set to decimal like that. So, Questions? Cool. Okay, so now, uh, this will fix Ben's problem, I believe. So back to uh, y equals is fine. You're going to go to window. So hit the window button. I want to make sure your graph matches the paper you're looking at. The paper you're looking at, the graphs begin at basically x equal negative 2. And they go to x equal 7, or in this case it's actually time. So time equal negative 2 to time equal 7. So on your calculator, that's what you're going to specify. The minimum x-axis coordinate will be negative 2. The maximum will be 7. So do that. Don't change anything else. Uh, now you're going to zoom fit, as Mr. Ruckety says. So you hit zoom. Uh, fit is far down the list. The quickest thing is to hit zero. That's zoom fit. Questions? Here's one a lot of people don't know about. If I start graphing and I realize something's wrong, you can always hit the on key. It will stop the graphing process. So you don't have to keep waiting. If I hit the on button, it'll stop. And then you can start over. Uh, mine doesn't have a problem, so I'm just going to hit on again and it will continue. Uh, I thought it would continue. Apparently not. Zoom fit again will work. Okay. Questions? Are you having trouble? True. So it's running, so hit the on key to stop it. Just double check. So it's right here, question. Like you ended up making that the exponent? See that? Does that make sense? Yeah, try that. Right 
at least. It's not working. Yeah, it, when I did the zoom, it, it moved. Yeah, it you're okay. It's still running, so mm -hmm. press on to stop it. Hit Y equal. Just double checking, Riley. It's right here. Um, notice the subtle difference. That means subtract. That means negative. Oh. So that's why it's having trouble. So try that, Riley. Oh, I've turned off one of mine. Yours is right. You're good. That's my mistake. How exciting. I've never seen that before. Oh, I know why. So right here. So notice the difference between that symbol and that symbol. Oh, so I did... Can you see it? Yeah, right, you, negative right. it needs to write a subtraction. So try that. Like, if we delete this, it's the same thing here. Yeah. So press the subtract, and then move over to this one. And I think it will stop doing what it was doing. See, that one's the wrong one, too. Yeah, try and fix that. So. You know what now? Okay, raise your hand, please, if you have this displayed on your screen. Show me. Point. Let's mark it down. Okay, next thing, grab a flashcard. Okay, before you write anything on the flashcard, let me give you some perspective. Of all the flashcards you will make, uh, None, will, none, not a single flashcard in the entire class will be more important than this one. Okay? So this is the golden flashcard. Uh, this is called, it's named after a student. Her name was Danica Wright. She actually was a soccer player. Um, she uh, came up with the idea of organizing some calculus concepts in this manner. Uh, it was her idea, uh, so I gave her credit for it. Somebody made a sign, we put it on the wall. Uh, students have heard her name for the last six, 15 years. Um, it's extremely helpful. <laughs> like, I won't be able to show you how helpful it is until we get kind of practicing, but put that on a flashcard. Go. Uh, you can just write Danica's chart. Uh, just the table. Yeah, just the table. The graph we'll use as an example to kind of talk about how the table works, but the table is what you'll memorize. The apostrophes here look a little weird because of the font I chose. I should have chose a different font. Uh, the headings are just F, and then F apostrophe like that. Uh, the word we use is we say F prime, and then F prime prime like that, or F double prime. Uh, somebody couldn't quite see. It's not a one, it's an I. It stands for increase. Increasing, so. Yeah, write those two, Nate. Good question.
Oh, it's hard to tell. It's it's two apostrophes. Is that what you mean? Yeah, the font there is kind of bad turn. It's just like this or like this. When you see me write it, it'll look like so, like that, like a double, like a quotation mark. Okay, next thing. So in the packet, first instructions are to, uh, we want to get to this screen here, this one. We're trying to just plot the position and the velocity for time equals zero to time equal 0.3 seconds. So we've got to do a couple things on your calculator. So on your calculator, y equal, we want to turn off the acceleration. The acceleration is the third plot. So you arrow down until the equal sign on the acceleration is highlighted. Once highlighted, press enter. The equal is now not highlighted. That means it will not graph the acceleration. Questions? Inspire is different. Um, Chris, do you know how to turn it off on the Inspire? No. That makes three of us now. I think it's a check mark. Let's see if you can get over there. Nope. Oh, there we go. So maybe. Right there. Now press enter or something. To, there. Perfect. Okay, you're good. <laughs> if you if you are, you're good. If you really don't have experience with the Inspire and you don't want to spend the time to learn, yeah. what I would do is go to the finance office, pay twenty dollars. Oh, you have one at home, so you're all set. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, people who like the Inspire like it, but it's you have you have to want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, look, hit window. We're changing the time scale from zero to, what did it say, 0.3? Yeah, so change the time scale from zero to 0.3. And then zoom fit again, like so. Question? Oh, Rachel, go ahead. What you'll do is you'll hit the, um, one second, Rachel. So under window, the, the thing to, that you have to remember is the x's are representing time. So we want to change time to start at 0, end at 0.3. Yep. And then zoom fit after that. Anybody need help? So hit Y equal. So we got to turn off the third one. No worries. Go down. Highlight the equal. Press enter. Hit window. Try it now. Zoom fit. It, yeah, it would be different because it was graphing the other, so it should be okay now. Yeah, you're good. Oh, wait a minute, still not working. Press the on key to stop it. Press Y equal. So one of your formulas has an error. It's right there. So you have a plus. It's minus. Yeah, try that. No, right here, minus one. 
So zoom fit again. Just zoom fit. There we go. Cool. You're welcome. You're okay. Hit Y equal. Hit window. Hit zoom. Zero. It's it's thinking. So it's fine. Now you're okay. Rachel. It's okay. Just put it flat like this so I can see. Hit the on key to stop it. Go white equal. Sorry to reach over you. Yeah, I, it happens to all of us, don't worry. Hit window again. It's because you're starting at negative two. We want to start at zero. No worries. And then zoom fit. Cool fingernails. Oh, well, you know. I, this is at a glance, it looked good, so. Yeah, you're good now. So, anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Look up. Okay. As you all know, key to the class is understanding, not doing. Uh, so, here's some understanding. As we look at this plot, here's what's happening. Clear this off. Okay, we have a plot of the position and velocity of a moving particle. A couple of key things for this class. Uh, when they talk about an object that is moving, you cannot think of it in a realistic way because that gets too complicated. So you think of it in an overly simplistic way. For example, <clears throat> I've seen AP problems that talk about unicycle riders, skateboard riders, cars, trains, airplanes, rockets, <laughs> okay, all of those things move in one dimension, like one direction. Uh, like if they talk about something moving horizontally, it is only moving as you see me moving, just straight back and forth. Don't picture the object doing anything else, just back and forth, okay? If it's an object that goes up and down, it goes straight up and straight down. It doesn't drift, it just up and down. So that makes the math a lot easier. Questions? Okay, cool. Uh, next thing. Um, so I had two students in the first COVID year, Ella Hawks and Ada Shippen, were very kind enough to purchase this very nice hat for me. Uh, they just didn't know that I always feel awkward when I put a hat on for some reason. I just am not a hat person. I don't know. Just, like as soon as I put the hat on, like I just get nervous. And, <laughs> But I will try my best. So, um, so what they wanted me to do, this is in honor of Ada and Ella, because they were awesome students. They put the hat on like this, you know, they get all adjusted. Things. Okay. So, as stated on the hat, yeah, I am now the particle. Okay. So, because the pro <laughs> we will solve a lot of AP problems that say a particle moves. Okay. So now I, I am the particle. Now, I normally would look up, but last time I did, I went blind because the projector is right above my head. Yes? Yeah. Okay. If you look in the, well, I just carefully don't see the bulb. <laughs> it's very bright. It's like looking at the sun. Um, so anyway, this is the center of my motion. You need to memorize that on an AP test question, they refer to where I am now standing as the origin. Okay? It has nothing to do with time. It just means the center location. And then as the particle, I would now move either to the right, I'm doing this for you, or to the left. Got it? And that's all I do. I do not have any other motion, just back and forth questions. Cool. So this graph is depicting a particle moving back and forth. For example, if we hit on our calculator, trace and then we 
make sure we're on the top graph, which is the position, and we type in zero, it'll say x equals zero. That means time equals zero. And if I press enter, you'll see the cursor here. I'm trying to show this for the people on TV. There we go, the video. So that's where the cursor is. Uh, that's telling you at time equals zero. Remember, the x is time. The y is where the particle is. Don't get mixed up. On the graph, y is this direction. But this zero is not referring to this direction up and down. It's referring to back and forth. So I'm at location zero. I'm right under the sun, okay? Right here in the center. Questions? Cool. Next thing. If you jump to the other graph, down arrow. Now we're on the velocity graph. The velocity graph is saying that at time equals zero, the particle has a velocity of negative one. So we now know two things. At time equals zero, this is where the particle is located. Uh, see if you can answer this one. Raise your hand. At this moment in time, is the particle stationary or moving? Raise your hand. Based on this data, this data tells you everything about the particle. At this moment, is the particle stationary or is the particle actually moving? Like I have a hard time acting it out. Taryn, tell me how you know. Say it again. Oh, that's not too bad. Like, you could go with that. I was looking for an answer that's a little bit different, but no, two points for that. Uh, let's go, Michelle. Ah, that's perfect. Everybody memorize that. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Like, in very simple terms, two points for Michelle. Uh, Mary, I'll tell her how to mark it down. Yeah, okay, good. Um, look. The, the position, the position only tells you where the particle is located. So when I did this and said at time zero, the particle is at location zero, I know the particle's here, that's all I know. When we looked at velocity, and as Michelle said, velocity being negative one means the particle has a velocity. It means the particle is moving, okay? Negative means it's moving to the left. One means it's moving, in this problem, one meter every second. Caution, though, it really isn't moving one meter every second. It just wants to move one meter every second because the velocity is always changing. So right after this instant when the particle wants to move one meter in the next second, the velocity goes down. It like becomes something less, Okay, something... Uh, less negative, I should say. So the particle wants to move, it's moving to the left, and at time zero, it has a velocity of negative, ooh, that's not the right button. Let's go back to here. Ah, stupid calculator. Stop. There we go. Questions? Cool. So, Let's, um, that is not what I wanted. Stop, you. Stop any time now. That was a really, yeah, whatever. So now the window got fouled up. Try again. Okay, so go to the packet. Um, First question says, what is the velocity of the particle at time equals zero? Uh, we noted that as negative one. Make sure you include meters per second in your answer. Make sure you include meters per second in your answer. On the AP test, the written section, there are many problems that will say include units. If you forget to include the units, they will take away one point. There is no mercy. Like, they look at your work, if it's perfect, but there are no units, like, nope, minus one. Please, Isaac. 
just for the answer. Yep. So the multiple choice section will have 45 total questions. The free response section will basically have, it's harder to predict because they are more, they change from year to year, but on the order of about 24 written questions. Written meaning you don't like write an essay or anything, but you just have to show your work. So, okay. Anybody else? And they're equally weighted. Half the score comes from multiple choice, half from written. So. Um, okay, so we know the particle's moving one meter per second. Make sure you use the units at time equals zero. Uh, let's talk about this. Look here. If I go forward in time, so I hit trace again. I put myself on the velocity graph come back to zero, and I go forward in time using the cursor. Like so. My velocity is becoming less and less negative. Uh, say it out loud, please. During this time frame, is the particle moving right or left? Say it. Let's try again. Anytime the velocity is negative, the particle is moving to the left. Like, memorize it. Anytime the particle's velocity is negative, it's moving left. So from time zero, look, the velocity is negative one. So I go forward in time, watch what the velocity is doing. The velocity is becoming less and less negative. So say it again as a chorus. Is the particle moving left or right? Say it. When the velocity is negative, the particle is always moving left. When the velocity is negative, the particle is always moving left. Okay? One more time. Chris has got it. When the velocity is negative, the particle is always moving left. So, look here. Watch. I'll move the cursor. You watch the values of the velocity. It's very exciting, I know. The excitement's reaching a peak. Hey, that's funny. Um, never mind. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Okay. Say it as a class, please. Is the particle moving for this entire time period? Zero to point three seconds. Is the particle moving left or right? Say it. Left. Thank you. Go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> left. Okay, next thing. The number... Okay, look up, look up. No, 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 it's a good question. Hey, two for John. Listen, listen, listen. Shh. Okay, look, focus. Here's what messes people up. One second, one second, sorry, sorry. Here's what messes people up. When they look at a graph, look, they think they are seeing the particle. If you will train your brain to say, the particle is not visible anywhere here at all. These are just numbers that tell us something about the particle. So as this little cursor moves to the right, that has nothing to do with the particle. That's just an indicator of what time we're at. So at all these different times, we are recording different velocities. Michelle. So if you look at the blue line, um, the x-axis is actually the time you're at, and the y-axis is the distance from the left to the right. So as you move down, you said you, you said it perfectly but I anticipate that others would like to hear it again so let me just say it again slightly differently if you look at here's what Michelle said look at the blue okay you have to pay attention to both numbers simultaneously but you are not looking at the particle here at all this is not a picture of the particle. I'm the, put the hat back on. I'm the particle, okay? I move like so, to the left. The graph goes to the right, that's time, okay? The blue is position and time. Well, they are related, but yeah. Look here, hey, focus, focus, come on. Focus. 
when you look at the blue graph, you have to keep track of two things. On every graph you look at, you're always keeping track of two things. So these two numbers tell you two things. At time equals zero, I am located right here. But we just said the particle's moving to the left because all of these orange values are negative, meaning the velocity is always negative, so the particle's going this way. Watch what happens on the blue. As I go forward in time, so now I'm at time 0.02. My position is a bit more negative because I am moving to the left. So you have to get used to the idea that when you look at the graph, you don't see the particle. Yes, the blue line is the position of the particle at many different times. Okay, listen to Luke. Hey, you're right on target now. Look, look. The two graphs are inextricably connected. And where we're getting to is how they're inextricably connected. Hope that's the right word. Okay. And you're right. The one graph is like telling the other graph what to do. But it goes both directions, actually. There, mathematically, we will eventually learn how to look at the blue and figure out what the orange is going to do. Or we can look at the orange and figure out what the blue is doing. Like they, they point to each other. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Two for Luke. Awesome. Um, Look at the orange again. Pay attention to the numbers. Raise your hand and answer this question. For the entire time period displayed on the screen, we know the particle is moving left because for that entire time period, the velocity is negative. Okay? The other way to tell is what Michelle said. I look at my position graph. My position graph is going down. That doesn't mean the particle is going down. Watch me. I am the particle. I don't go down. I only go to the left. Okay? But this thing going down means these values are becoming more and more negative, meaning my position to the left, John saw it, my position to the left is more and more negative. Does that make sense? Question. Yes is good. Thank you. All feedback is appreciated. Okay, answer this question. For this entire time period, as the particle moves to the left, raise your hand and answer, is the particle speeding up, slowing down, both hands up? What is the particle doing as it moves to the left? Is it speeding up, slowing down? Kate in the back. Nicely done. From this time to this time, the velocity is becoming less and less negative. Hence, particles moving to the left, and slowing as it moves to the left. I'm not very good at acting that out, but something like this. Like it's moving to the left, and as I move to the left, every time I take a step, I make a smaller step. Uh, Caitlin is doing good animation in the back, and I try to slow down. It's getting you know, slow down. Yeah, okay. Okay. But then, right here, okay, say it out loud, please. From this time to this time, is the particle moving left or right? Say it. Left. Still going left. I just start to speed up again as I am moving to the left. Okay, questions? Cool. So let's write some things down on the sheet. Velocity of the particle at time equals zero. We already did that. Okay, please pay close attention to this symbol here. Okay, I said to Luke, make sure you mark down when I say your name. I said to Luke that when you look at a graph, you must keep track of two things simultaneously. When I look at the blue graph, right here, I have to keep track of the position and the time. That's why you have a symbol like this, x of zero. That's keeping track of two things. We would call the position x of t, that's on the front of the packet, x of t, because the little t inside represents time, but the entire symbol represents position at some time. So when I write x of zero, I am referring to the position when the time is zero. That's the time. And we 
saw on the calculator that that position for this problem is zero. Won't always be, but for this one, yes. Questions? Cool. So he's put a zero here, and then there, again, remember, you are building a study guide for the test. So you want to make sure you have very good notes because you don't get another study guide. It's like this is your study guide. So um, you want to write in here, what does x of 0 mean? x of 0 represents the position at time 0. That's what the symbol means. Questions? Please. Uh -huh. So x of 0 represents the position of the particle at time equals 0. The key thing, Luke, is this. Every time you read x of 0, your brain has to say, that is position. And at what time? Time zero. Anybody else? Okay. It says at time equal zero seconds, is the particle move, moving left or right? We already answered that. Particle is moving left. How do we know the velocity is negative? So when the velocity is negative, particle is moving left. The velocity is negative, particle is moving left. So what I'm doing different, I think, when I was talking to John and Luke, is that, um, it's not like the Bible. Okay, um, that was a decent joke. That was decent. Sorry, bad jokes. Okay, you, get that, you never got that one before? No. Oh, that's right. Yeah, forgot. Working on it. Um, when I look at a graph, hey, when I look at a graph, I don't really pay close attention to the up and down. I pay attention to what the numbers are doing. Like I see these velocity numbers becoming less and less negative. That's how I know the particle is moving left, and it is slowing as it moves to the left. So, questions? Cool. So item four, item four is summarizing what we've just been saying. Write the following in item four. The position, you can abbreviate, the position I guess we should put position because POS is more like positive, sorry. Uh, the position is decreasing. You can't abbreviate decreasing. That's legal on the AP test. The position is decreasing at time equals zero seconds. Look at it right here. The position graph is going down. That means the position is decreasing. Or the velocity... is negative at time equals zero. That can be abbreviated. So the particle is moving left at that time. So basically trying to get you to understand what Michelle was saying is that you can look at either graph and make the determination as to which way the particle is moving. You could see just the position, you would still know the particle is moving left. If you see just the velocity, you would know the particle is moving left. Okay. Questions about anything? Curiosities, concerns, whatever. Okay, let's keep going. Item five. Uh, we've already answered that. V of zero is negative one meters per second. That means the velocity at time zero. It says to find the velocity at time point one. So I just go to my calculator. Uh, it's all set up because I'm in trace. Type point one. Press enter. There we go, negative point four oh six. Questions? It says, what is speed? Write this on your packet and memorize it. Okay, it doesn't matter what you think speed is. For AP calculus, speed is the absolute value of the velocity. Okay? Speed is the absolute value of the velocity. Then it says, between time equals zero and time equal 0.1, is the particle speeding up or slowing down? We already talked about that. Here's time equal zero. Uh, looking at my calculator, time equal 0.1 is about here. And during that time period, we already talked about how the velocity values 
are becoming less and less negative. Therefore, the particle is slowing down. That would be the answer to six. This is the particle speeding up or slowing down. It's slowing down. How do you know? The velocity is getting less and less negative. Or some people prefer to say the velocity is getting closer to zero. That also is an indication that the particle is slowing down. So, either way. Questions? Cool. It says between, oh, this is just restating. The velocity becomes less and less negative. So moment by moment, the particle is moving less and less to the left. Uh, the worksheet seems redundant in spots. That's not meant to be busy work. It's just meant to reinforce connections. So, questions? Keep going. Go to number eight. It says, use your calculator to plot the position and velocity from time zero to time one. So you go back to your calculator, change your window. Now we're going to go zero, one. Press zoom fit. So anybody having trouble getting that? Raise your hand if you have that on your screen. Show me your hands if you have that on your screen. Point? Okay, cool. Uh, fill out item eight, go. I showed you how to do it, so do eight. Stop me if you have a question, just wave if you have a question. So fill out item eight. When you're done, put your pencil down so I can see that you're with me again. Or look up or something, you know, you can hold your pencil if you want. Okay, hands up. What do we got for this one? Hands up. What do we got? Hands. Soraya, what do you got? So this one's zero. We already knew that. Soraya, what's the next one? Exactly. Uh, how many got that? Point two for Soraya. So negative three minus zero would be negative three. Okay, some of the vocabulary here is critical. Vocabulary isn't always critical in this class. There are different ways you can say the same thing. But you do need to memorize that what we have fig figured out right here is a change in position. That word will get used a lot. Okay, we figured out the change in position. How different is one position from another? So between those two times, the position changed by three meters. Because it's negative, it changed to the left by three meters. Time equals zero, the particle was here in the center. However the particle moved, one second later it's over here. Three meters to the left of where it was. Questions? Cool. Okay, so that's the answer to nine, of course. Changed by three meters to the left. I'm hoping this feels easy uh, because this is not AP stuff yet. We're just building to it, right? We're just trying to get the foundation. Um, okay, key word here. They will test you on this on the AP test. It is extremely common to have a question like that somewhere amongst the, as I said to Chris, the basically 72 questions you're going to answer 
one of them will talk about average velocity. Okay? Um, it's the average rate at which the position changes. It's a really simple idea. Here's the formula, but honestly, I would not memorize the formula. It's, it's too much of a pain to like memorize all those symbols. Just memorize the idea. It's way easier. The idea is simple. I was here. I am now here. Say it out loud. How much did my position change by? Say it. Never once again. I'm here at time zero. One second later, my position is negative three. So I'll just say it. My position changed by negative three meters. Okay? It did that over how much time? Say it. How much time went by? Say it. One second. That's it. So my position changed by negative three meters. It changed by that amount over one second. That's the average velocity. That's it. That looks like a five, sorry. That's all this big formula is telling you. I promise, if you memorize that idea, it's much, much easier than memorizing the green box. Just memorize that it's just how much did my position change divided by how much my time changed. That's rate of change, average rate of change. It is crucial you memorize the word average, though, because we will eventually compare it to instantaneous rate of change. Average means how much did something change over a time period? Instantaneous means how much did something change at an instant? Like at a given moment, how fast is something changing? Question. Cool, keep going. Uh, what is the average velocity of the particle for that time period? We just figured that out. Negative three meters per second. That means on average, the particle wants to go three meters every second during that time period. So, questions? Uh, that's all this is saying. Therefore, on average, the particle's position is changing by negative three meters. I know it seems redundant every one second. Just trying to build a really good study guide for the test. So. Sweet item 12. Change the window to seven, go. Okay, we just mentioned average rate of change. Okay, make sure you keep those two words separate. Average rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. We just did a simple example of average velocity. Average velocity means average rate at which the position changes. Now we're going to talk a little bit about instantaneous rate of change which means the instantaneous rate at which position is changing. Um, these symbols you will have to memorize. Like this box, you must have that thoroughly memorized. You'll get tested on that idea over and over again throughout the year. You won't be asked to reproduce the box. You just have to be able to look at the symbol and go, oh, I know what that means. Like you're reading a problem and you see this. You have to say, I know what that means. That means the instantaneous velocity of a moving particle. When you see that symbol, that's, that's what you have to be thinking. Uh, they love to test you with different symbols. So you read another problem, it will say x prime of t means the same thing. You've got to know both symbols. They'll use them in different problems. When they talk about the velocity, You've got to know that that means the same thing. That's what this box is telling you. 
And then the last one, of course, is it also means the tangent slope of the position. So I haven't really given you background on kind of where that all comes from, but we got to start somewhere. So, questions? So, brand new symbols, four of them. Those you must have memorized. So at t equals, t equals six seconds, the tangent slope of the position graph is what? So new thing here, I don't think you've ever done this. So on your calculator, we're going to go to a time of six seconds. So we hit trace, and we're supposed to be finding the tangent slope of the position, just like it says here in orange. We're finding the tangent slope of the position tangent slope of the position. So on my calculator, I'm going to go to time equal 6 on the position graph. I am trying to find the slope of the graph at that point, at that instant. The way you would draw that is, let's see where that's at. Okay, gotcha. So on this, this drawing, we're coming right here, time equal 6. And we are literally trying to find the slope at that spot, which means we are trying to find the slope of this green line. That's the tangent slope of the position. I'll label it. So this is trying to find the tangent slope of the position graph at time equal 6. That's what we're trying to calculate. Anybody want me to talk more about what we are trying to do? I haven't shown you how to do it yet, but... Okay, cool. Here's uh, two different ways to do it. First method, go back to your calculator. You need to go to the main screen. Now, there is a way to do it from this screen, but it is less accurate, so I don't recommend you use it for fear you'll lose points on the AP test. So go to the main screen, which you do second quit. Oh, bell ring, we'll pick it up next time. Uh, warning, hey, you'd have, you do not need to do anything on this yet. It's kind of like we did before, where we'll finish this next time, I have another packet for you, and then you do that as homework, so you don't need to do anything on this. It just takes a while to kind of get the next big idea, so. Good job, you guys. Well done.